Hello everyone. In our previous video, we have learnt about plasma membrane. And today also we will learn some more properties of plasma membrane and about cell wall. So, in hypotonic solution, when we keep a plant cell or an animal cell, it will gain water and cell will swell up. So, this process is called endosmosis and in case of hypotonic solution, hypotonic solution which is concentrated solution. So, if we keep a cell in hypotonic solution, cell will lose water because we know water can move in both the directions. So, water molecules those which are leaving the cell their number is more. So, in this condition cell will lose more water and it will shrink. So, this process is called exosmosis. So, now we have studied about endosmosis and exosmosis. So, just now we have studied about osmosis and diffusion. So, you must be thinking why these processes are important? These processes are important because unicellular some, some unicellular freshwater organisms they gain water by the process osmosis and plants also absorb water. Plants how they take water? Their roots absorb water. So, plants they absorb water how? By osmosis. So, osmosis it is a very important process and diffusion, diffusion gaseous exchange like we need oxygen and carbon dioxide is a waste product. So, exchange of this carbon dioxide and oxygen in and out of the cell it occurs with the help of diffusion by diffusion. So, th these both processes are very important and diffusion and osmosis they do not require energy. It is spontaneous. Both the processes they are spontaneous. So, exchange of gases like CO2 and carbon dioxide, CO2 and oxygen and absorption of water. Movement of water across the cell membrane, it does not require energy. But cell also requires some nutrients, nutrients for the maintenance. So, these like glucose, amino acids and there are some ions and waste product of the cell. So, how these things they move, their movement require energy. So, this is called active transport means like we have studied diffusion and osmosis they do not require energy. These are spontaneous process but nutrients like glucose, amino acids and ions their movement require energy because their movement is unidirectional. It occurs only in one direction and it require energy. So, we are studying about plasma membrane. So, plasma membrane it is a thin and elastic and made up of proteins and lipids. See uh, proteins you know but what are lipids? Lipids are organic compounds which contain hydrogen, carbon and oxygen atom and lipids are found in oil, butter, cheese and fried food. Fried food. So, plasma membrane thin and elastic and this elasticity helps in performing various tasks as it is selectively permeable membrane. So, it, it plays a very important role in diffusion and osmosis. So, plasma membrane it is very flexible and this feature helps in various ways and you know unicellular organisms like amoeba it engulf its food with the help of plasma membrane because it does not have any organ a specific organ for the intake of food. So, amoeba it is a jelly like structure which has false feet and what do we call these false feet pseudopodia pseudopodia. So, it forms a cup like structure which engulf the food and plasma membrane due to its flexibility amoeba it engulf its 
food and it is called endocytosis so what is endocytosis ingestion of materials by the cell through the plasma membrane it is called endocytosis and it happens due to the flexibility of plasma membrane so please listen ingestion of materials by the cell through the plasma membrane is called endocytosis so plasma membrane this structure we can observe with the help of electron microscope so here i would like to tell you about electron microscope electron microscope it's a very large instrument and this microscope uses electromagnet and a very high voltage electricity it uses electromagnets and a beam of electrons see in compound microscope it uses sunlight but here it, electron microscope it uses beam of electrons so its magnification is also very high and we can see 1 lakh to 5 lakh 5 lakh times larger image of the specimen while in compound microscope we can see only 300 to 1500 times larger image but here we can see very large image of the specimen and specimen with that we observe under microscope so that should be very ultra thin and dried so now we are studying about cell wall cell wall which is the special feature of plant cell it is found in plant cell it is a rigid outer covering of the cell especially plant cell which lies outside of the plasma membrane cell, see cell membrane it is the outermost covering of the plant cell which lies outside of the plasma membrane see cell membrane it's a living structure but cell wall it is non living and it is freely permeable like cell membrane it was selectively permeable because it allows the entry of selective things but it is freely permeable to water and the substances which are there in the solution and plant cell wall it is made up of cellulose cellulose a kind of carbohydrate and it is a very complex substance which provides the mechanical strength and support to the cell so now we are studying about plasmolysis so plant cell it has a very special feature which is cell wall so when we keep a living plant cell into hypertonic solution hypertonic solution a very concentrated solution so when we keep a living plant cell into hypertonic solution so what will happen cell loses water by osmosis and there is shrinkage or contraction of the contents of the cell and these contents they move away from the cell wall so this phenomena is called plasmolysis and for this i have drawn here pictures in which a condition cell and b this these cell contents they are shrinking and in c cell is plasmolyzed means all the contents cell contents they are moving away from the cell wall so this phenomena is called plasmolysis and it happens in living plant cell just now we have studied about plasmolysis if we keep a plant cell into hypertonic solution it loses water and cell contents they will shrink and they move away from the cell wall this is plasmolysis and what will happen if we keep a plant cell into hypertonic solution a very dilute solution in this condition we know that cell it gain it will gain water so by the process osmosis so cell contents they also exert because water is more inside the cell so it build up a pressure exert it build up a pressure against the cell wall and 
in return cell wall also exert pressure equal pressure and which allow a cell a plant cell a fungal cell or bacterial cell to withstand in a very dilute solution so plant cell bacterial cell or fungal cell they can withstand in a very dilute solution because they all have cell wall in them plants bacteria and fungi while in case of animal cell animal cell like if we keep rbc in a dilute solution so it get burst because it does not have cell wall while in plant cell it does not burst and animal cell it get burst